Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, we are now on our official, official second show of this year, The Falcon and Winter Soldier, mm. Disney+. Plus. I cannot wait to get into it. I'm Peel. And I'm Travis, and this is The Travis and Peel Show. Let's do it. Mm, I want Drink more. Drink it up because it goes down smooth, my friend. I want more Marvel greatness. I want it. Oh man, I want what it. What a contrast to Wandavision to, to start off, huh? Yeah, huh? yeah it, it definitely is. Uh, we've discussed this before. Like Marvel, the MCU in and of itself is not like about being the home of comic book movies. They want to make genre films. This is what they've been doing, yeah. and they continue to do it. Um, genre after genre so as per usual let's jump into this with uh spoiler free takes spoiler free. uh what are you what are your thoughts on the uh, first episode um all right well going into this uh i mean fantastic i mean anthony mackie um new orleans boy uh you How know you so it's really great seeing him uh you know uh come out here and and just leading this role mm. uh, this is bringing great light on like the falcon and uh this this character who's always been under that shadow of uh captain america so i'm really enjoying seeing this story progress and uh this this character development really getting with him and then of course bucky we've seen a lot of him and a lot of his past but now we're getting him now and how he's dealing with being out you know people know who he is um he's obviously worked with everybody he's kind of like a you know a pseudo hero anti-hero whatever you want to call him right uh, so he's out there in this world and of course everything that's unfolding during this time and it was a really uh just a fantastic first episode mm. um very hyped up uh filled with action uh you know couple nice you know down to the down to the home hitting the heart with family moments and it was a great episode i can't wait next week and i wish there was more episodes because this is a limited season it's not like you know wandavision can be nine episodes like six, it's gonna be a lot shorter six, six episodes maybe yeah. seven or something like that um, this was 49 minutes um so you know kudos to that uh so yeah i can't wait till next week and a great first episode and way to begin um our second show Talk yeah your soldier baby this show does not have to do much for me um I want to I want to see Marvel take the opportunity to make side characters which at the end of the day Falcon and Winter Soldier kind of have been relegated to the to the sidelines a bit but mm -hmm. I want to see them get flushed out I want to see uh we're already sold we're already like invested in these guys we're already sold in these guys um now it's time to flush them out more and and give us more reason, show us more reasons similar to WandaVision, like why we love Wanda and Vision so much. Right. Well, now, like we already know, we love like Falcon and Winter Soldier. Now give us a give us more reasons why, like like really cement that. And I think that's that's really for me all this show needs to do. I want to see a good story. I want to see. Uh, I, I don't need anything that's gonna like build to the next end game event. I, I'm I'm mm -hmm. not ready. I'm ready to take this. Like I'm ready to heel toe it. With WandaVision, with WandaVision, man, I was so, I was so just like, oh yeah, and I think Flash. this is gonna happen, and I think this is gonna happen, and I think this is gonna happen. Like, I, I, I really doubt that Falcon and Winter Soldier is going to be that show where like, like we Minimal want to holes. know what happens next. <laughs> they were gonna like, go down. like they know that there's like we're, we're gonna like week to week like gonna be dying for the next episode. But it's just because we want to mm -hmm. know what happens. But yeah, there's going to be no breaking down like massive prophecies or whether or not the, the goddamn oh, it's bug going on the happen. shade, the, we, the, we the bug on the shade is Mephisto or something like that. Like I, I, I see, I would be shocked if there was like any type of something. This is a straightforward Captain America movie. It's what it seems like a very long version of it. And uh, it's kind of hitting like everything that makes the winter, like Captain America, Winter Soldier and Civil War. What makes those movies so great? Mm. Um, they really kind of hit. Like thematically, uh, for me uh, here, um, the the themes, yeah, and, big action flicks, yeah, the themes and the big character um, mm -hmm. analyzation, like all well, the analyzing that we're doing. I, I like the storylines we're focusing on um, uh, for both uh, Bucky and Sam, uh, and we'll touch on those a little bit deeper when we go like recap uh, uh, with spoilers. So I overall, I'm pretty, I'm pretty satisfied with it. It didn't blow me away. I expected more action. The action scene we got uh, in the very beginning was pretty good. Hmm. Uh, there was a little bit more. I enjoyed action. what we got. No, I'm not saying I didn't. I enjoyed this quite thoroughly. I just, uh, 
I had an expectation about what it was. It hit those expectations. I'm ready for next week. And mm-hmm. I want to see more. I just, I'm not like um, blown away. Nah. Like, I'm not completely blown away. So, my chair is making noise. I don't know if that can be heard in the. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Your chair. So, sure, 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 guy. <laughs> sure, guy. Yes, yeah, I don't, not a public farter. Okay, Get buddy. out of here with that mess. So, uh, that was our uh, spoiler free thoughts. Spoiler free. Are you now ready? We're going to spoil the shit out of it. Let's do it. Let's ruin it for everyone. Dig deep. <laughs> Let's not quite. Um, <laughs> so we have this aligned in a very specific order. So we're going to start off with. Uh, uh, so we open up to somewhere around like three to six months after Endgame. Uh, I think it's it important. seems like that. We don't get a really definite answer in this. Yeah, somewhere three to six months is, is kind of where I'm placing it here. Uh, so it's been some time to cope with the blip, which seems like to be a very big. Uh, big event like, affected a lot of people a lot of different ways right so but it seems like we're, we're really starting to capture the themes of what was it mm-hmm. like during those five years it was touched upon uh in in wandavision and we're really starting to see that be a central theme like how people are affected by the last five years um which i've been dying for i've been really dying for like more the blip would have been the most like you you could have calibrated calendar <laughs> eras around the blip, like the moment of the blip. It was such a massive, massive moment okay. in human history. I have to say this right now. Sure. I hate the name the blip. I I, I hate it when I first heard it in Spider Man and I'm not a I'm not uh, a fan. Every time, I, every time people say it, like you just said it like four times in a row, and I was just like, "Oh, it's gut wrenching." I absolutely, I, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of the, the blip named the snap. I was cool with, you know, that's cool when it snap. first happened. I was cool but with of the, blip. the blip bringing everybody back. That, there was you could have chose a better name, Marvel. There that was, was that was weak sauce. There was also a um, yeah, the blip is a weak name. I'm with you. Like I wasn't even I wasn't a <laughs> fan. Blip. I wasn't even a fan of what they like the rumored. Uh, like a official name was like the first rumored official name was uh, the decimation. I didn't like that either. That was too much. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it sounds just, better than the blip. It sounds cooler than the blip, but, but the decimation would be more of the snap. But anyways, we digress. We got aggro. Falcon and winter soldier. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're already yes, in the, the weeds. Yeah. We're already in. The weeds. We'll, we'll, we'll come up with something better. In fact, everybody leave a comment. Let us know a better name than the blip. Okay. Yeah. Put it down and we're going to come out with our new name next week. There we go. Um, so, so yeah, taking place months after Endgame, uh, Sam seems to be donating Cap Shield to the uh, Smithsonian. Um, yeah, very one of the big, Yep, one of the big uh, themes that we saw here was that um, Sam, and he even said it in Endgame, like he always felt like the shield belonged mm-hmm. to someone else. Um, and that person was Steve. And that person was Steve. And he just, Sam doesn't necessarily feel... Uh, worthy or up to the task. I don't think not necessarily mm-hmm. to become Captain America. It's just that, like, I think it's more like out of respect. He had so high respect and held him in such his esteem that he didn't feel mm-hmm. out of respect to the man. Not necessarily. I, I I think he would want to be Captain America, but I just feel like he. It's more of a respect thing. So I like starting off Sam. Like like we we were introduced to Sam. This is where he's at mentally, and I kind of like the start for him. Um, it's a, it's a feeling that we've all felt before. It's very humanizing. Um, so mm-hmm. that's a really good start to to reintroduce Sam to us post blip. Um, so yeah, I, I liked it. Not, and also, it was cool to see Rhodey do a little ca- cameo and be there. Oh yeah, you know, little helping Rhodey, a little Don Cheadle, little yeah. Don Cheadle action. Yeah. So apparently, those guys are not in trouble. Um, they're not court martialed. Yeah. Post. And this scene we, is we, just we, uh. Two healthy uh, black gentlemen walking through a museum honoring Captain America memorabilia while putting their hands in their pockets. This is uh, something what? that really bothered me about this scene is they walk up, they look at something, and hands in pockets. And they walk up to the next thing, look at something, hands in pockets. Like okay. Don Cheadle was very noticeable doing this. I don't know, it's just something that bothered me about this scene. I was just like, why are they to keep putting their hands in their pockets? But once again, I digress. Totally weird, but... Wait a minute. It was, it was a funny moment you, while I was watching this. You were you were bothered by their 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 hands being in their pockets. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam kept his hands in his pockets pretty much the whole time. It he's got he's got to keep those Rody wings Rody in. Kept, he's got to keep those wings. Wings can pop yeah, out anytime. Yeah, he, so you got to be. He's strapped. Yeah, you got to be in. 
But well, roadies yeah, I, just, uh, I, don't, I, I don't know why they just kept putting their hands in their pockets. It was just very weird. I don't know. It was just a fun, like I said, one of those funny thing you notice. It, and I was just like, oh, okay. An interesting criticism. And I bring by it up my here. man, by right. my man, Jonathan Peel. I feel but you. But what does it mean? Is there something in their No. It's Mephisto. Everybody knows this. It's Mephisto. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so it most likely is not Mephisto, but as we said, Sam is, uh, just flat out doesn't feel, uh, uh worthy. And he's also reenlisted into the Air Force doing mm-hmm. pararescue, which was, uh, what he was doing before he started helping, um, vets with PTSD. Uh, he was a part right. of a pararescue unit, um, and uh, he seems to be doing a pretty bang up job because it gives us our first action set piece. Give, letting us know real quick that this is not WandaVision. Um, exactly. This is a this is a full blown uh, Winter Soldier slash uh, action sequences like Civil War explosions. events. Yeah, so it's definitely going to be more of that action spy movie type thing, and they let us know that right away. Kind of a little bit of a Top Gun feel to it, because uh, it's it's kind of neat. You can have the aviation and everything, very, yeah. like very cool, like uh, dog fighting style action, but yet mm-hmm. it be like two humans like flying in the air at each other. It's 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 super fun. Uh, really, the cool. way he used his wings in this was fantastic. Uh, just when he was even fighting, yeah, was, was amazing. That the one scene where he grabbed that dude, had him buckled over, and just mm-hmm. like turned on the jets and slamming him into the crate there's mm-hmm. just so many cool little sequences of course yeah, Houston is a, a shield cool and guarding there. himself but man but yeah like you said the dog fight and the the maneuvering and going through the mm-hmm. rocks and you know dodging all the missiles wow like that was one of my favorite parts is just just watching all the aerodynamics yeah it's really happening cool in the show and yeah they they really upped the budget for this yeah yeah uh totally and <laughs> uh so yeah it was just a great kind of introduction to sam's capabilities as a as a mm-hmm. as a hero in the business he's back with the air force doing that thing um, and he's going up against a group uh, called the LAF, and one of their big henchmen, Batrock, is uh, is GSP. leading this group. And Batrock is a, I was not expecting this villain cameo. Like he's such a right. a, a weird um, side French character. I remember him from. Uh, like a six episode run of the Punisher back when I was like 12 or mm-hmm. something like that. Like the Punisher went to the Europe French and then fought with Batrock uh, in France and stuff like that. So we get Batrock uh, more to that cool action fight scene and everything. And then uh, he, uh, Sam takes him out. I think he murdered a couple of people on the way there. I'm not going to lie. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of moments. There's a couple of moments. Oh, yeah, where I'm I, mean, like, I don't think <laughs> that person's getting up, man. I think they're donezo. And it, and that carrier that would have, the guy who um, was the pilot and was, you know, flying it, who one who saw Sam. So, you know, he gets a bullet through his head and yeah. then he goes on autopilot and everybody jumps out the plane, right? Right. What happens to the plane? What happened to the plane? Did it land? <laughs> There's nobody on the plane. The pilot's dead. It went on autopilot. Like, what happens when the gas runs out? I'm just saying negligence. Oh wow! Yeah, this thing's going down at some point. I never thought about. The, I've never thought about. The, I saw a lot of weird things, dude. I I don't know. I'm I'm pointing out weird things. Sorry. So yeah, it's interesting. Did, not only did Sam commit a lot of murders in the beginning of episode one, he uh, then let a plane just loosely fly out and run out of gas and crash <laughs> into a small village in Taiwan. Well, guys, if you happen to catch what happened to the plane and we just missed it, let us know in the comments. Um. Yep. So uh, we are also. Uh, introduced to the the flag smashers later on in this episode, mm-hmm. um, and uh, one of the people that were was a uh, rescued um, and works with Sam is uh, with the in the Air Force is well, what is I don't I didn't catch his name but he's got like a kind of like a he's got like a buddy sidekick now. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, he like does Rico, a little admirer or, yeah. Rico or Rocco or something like that. But anyway, he uh, he introduces uh, hey, Sam. Rocco. He introduces Sam uh, to the uh, LAF and the Flag Smashers and who they are and what they want to do. And apparently, their mo is that they happen to like life a little bit better during the blip. They liked it when there were less people mm-hmm. here. Um, Flag Smashers is uh, seemingly like a group in this TV show because we see them like kind of like recruit some people out in the streets while they also did like a, some sort of like uh, money or jewel heist or some sort of like heist 
Um, yeah, it's like a, a very violent flash mob. <laughs> exactly. And then the flash mob. So, so the flash, uh, the flag smashers. This group is taking <laughs> the role of flag smasher, who is a character in the comic books, and he's kind of like an anti-fascism, anti-government type of person. Where it's essentially they. Well, this he just guy wants- that jumps down. There's he something has there with him, right? Yeah, I mean, for sure. He has powers. Yeah. He kicked the shit out of that cop, and he went flying through that pole, yeah. man. And then he picked up Rocco Rico and flipped his ass over and like put a hurting and on him, like him. one kick, boom, crushes you know orbital bone. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's definitely something there. Uh, and you know, luckily he was recording this while it was happening. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's quite the ass whooping, and he definitely had superhuman uh, superhuman powers. Mm-hmm. Um. And so, yeah, so, yeah, we definitely have a, a group right now that is uh, our first sign of being any type of uh, antagonist in our in our <laughs> young TV show. Uh, and then now we use fought, we uh, zip back over to uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bucky. We haven't seen oh, him all up. James Barnes. Yeah. And he is having a uh, gnarly little nightmare, uh, kind of like a flashback nightmare where he is. Uh, Which we've seen a lot with him. Yeah, we've seen a lot with him. And it's only uh, it's only right for us to start this uh, television a- adventure with it happening to him as well. And um, he is doing his thing, chilling, killing. And then he sees a witness, chilling him. this young guy witness who is uh, frantically trying to get a key to unlock a door, but he cannot do it in time. Uh, wrong Winter place, Soldier, wrong time. Wrong place, wrong time. Uh, Winter Soldier wipes the board with him, shoots him in the head. And, and Bucky uh, wakes up. And Bucky wakes up. And he is clearly um, constantly haunted by this because when we catch up more with him throughout later scenes, we know that... Uh, he is hanging out with this older guy that happens to be the father of this mm. young man that he uh, killed. Nikamura, I believe. Right, and uh, Bucky has a list of people he want to make some men make amends to, and this guy is number one on his list. He has of all his guilt, of all the things that keeps him awake at night, literally and figuratively. Um, this guy was number one on his list. Um, he's also in therapy, working with a mm-hmm. uh, yeah. with a working in steps. Yeah, working the steps. He's looking for redemption. He's looking for a new way to adjust, which I thought was another fantastic theme that I wasn't really even expecting. Um, but it definitely, sh- it definitely shows that like you know, the life of a superhero is not all glitzy. Um, it it, it comes. It may come with perks like attention. We see Falcon getting mm-hmm. a lot of positive attention from the crowd. But we also see that he was not necessarily financially taken care of, you know, being right. being off the grid for five years, and then on top of that, not really making a an actual Any kind of salary, salary or job or anything like that. Avenger. You know, there's like government contracts and subsidies that they're able to get, you know, funds off of. Right. So uh, it was kind of cool that you know they mentioned, you know, hey, this is how some people make money uh, as a superhero. Um, but I do love this, and that's why uh, I mentioned in the uh, spoiler free uh, prelude that was I like how you go into this development where we've seen you know Bucky in the past, we've seen him as the Winter Soldier, we've seen him come through the Winter Soldier. Now mm-hmm. it's this present moment of post everything, and he doesn't have Steve Rogers anymore there. No, nope. you know, so he's also having to deal with that. He is alone for the first time in 106 years. He mm-hmm. is truly alone. Uh, and he's having to live with everything that he's done over the over that time. So I I love that they're developing him this way and showing you this other side of him because they really are once again getting that that human uh, characteristics and those human natures that you know mm, are going to yeah. touch on some heartstrings with him. And you're seeing the suffering that he's going to. And Sebastian Stan plays a really cool role in this. The dating scene, um, you know, the the remorse that he feels uh, towards you know this this old gentleman. Uh, so it's really interesting to see how they're going to kind of play that through because obviously we know. He's telling people, I am not the Winter Soldier. I am James Barnes. You know, right. you were part of my uh, making amends. You know, so this is going to be very interesting to see how this kind of plays through because obviously the Winter Soldier is going to come back because it is the Falcon and Winter Soldier, not Indeed. the Falcon and James Barnes. That is a fact. And uh, more facts that we get in this episode is that Sam also has a family in Louisiana, which is a nice little callback to his real life roots. Um, mm-hmm. Shout out to the uh, to the Dirty Dirty South. Uh, Who that? How about them boys, huh? How about them? Um, 
so yeah, we meet Sam's family. We uh, meet uh, mainly his sister. And his uh, mm-hmm. and his uh, nieces nephews. and nephews, or just nephews, I think. Two nephews, um, but mainly his sister. Uh, they uh, they have a failing, struggling business. Uh, they're trying to sell a family heirloom, mm-hmm. which is a big family boat. Uh, Sam has issues with this, and he wants to help her out, come to her rescue, because that apparently is his mo. Um, and they um and it's also half his half the boat's half his the house half is his, half his yeah half, yeah for sure and he um yeah they go try to get a loan and that's when we get this really probably like the the highlight for me when you're talking about superhero juxta- juxtaposing like superheroes and the fantasy of them versus like how it right. would actually work in the real reality life. one of the reasons mm-hmm. why we love the boy so much is because it's like an asinine take on like how these guys could possibly really be. And this is more of like a, 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 a homegrown um, realistic take on it that like, yeah, this guy probably wasn't making money. He was doing truth and justice and he wasn't robbing banks and stuff like that. We know how the villains get all their money, but how do the heroes and stuff like that? So, right. And whereas in the boys, we know that they were bought by corporations. Whereas in yeah, this situation, actors and whatnot. Yeah. So in this situation, like it doesn't seem that we have that, like they had Avengers headquarters. They had their own place to live. They probably had unlimited food. They probably, it was probably a Google mm. campus. Let's be real. Um, they didn't have to do anything or pay for anything. They lived for nothing. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, it's interesting to see that, he is loved and adored, but like that does nothing for him when it comes yeah. to like the real world. Doesn't help your credit score. Does not help your credit score, especially being quote unquote dead for uh for five, five years. years. <laughs> so that is not uh not usually helpful. Not usually helpful. Um Bucky uh meets a uh, meets a girl through his new friend uh and goes on a date. And Thought it was an interesting choice for Bucky to go from I don't know how to adjust to civilian life in general to all right, I'm gonna meet a girl. Like to me that just like it Yeah. He is way too it was the most unbelievable thing that I saw in this entire episode. And this is an this is a a video about a guy with a metal arm and an, another guy who can fly. So and this was the most unrealistic thing. <laughs> and you thing thought this was I, the most yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I just thought it was a weird choice to have them actually go on a date. Um, but hey, Bucky deserves it. It was a force push thing though. It It was, it was was. nice. It was a very nice sentiment. Um, and even like the scene itself, I thought it was, you know, well played out. And then of course you start talking about those sensitive subjects and going into, you know, why the old man is how he is Mm -hmm. with his son, um, you know, being murdered and being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, and it come you know obviously puts everything together for everybody watching. Obviously, you know the old man's son was the one who Bucky killed, uh, mm-hmm. and you know this is his like once again that remorse coming up, how bad he feels. And he walks out on the date, you know, mm-hmm. ruins the date, ruins. and he also didn't lose his battlefield game. I mean, yeah, his battlefield game. So uh, he didn't lose. He still had one uh, one ship on the board. He still had it. So the, he still has to come back and finish that game because you cannot not finish i can't not not finish no that's i called it battlefield on that was called battleship battleship um so this takes us pretty much to the very end of the episode my friend sam Mm -hmm. sitting there chilling trying to start his boat didn't work goes inside and notices that he did not in fact donate his shield to the smithsonian his sister points it out to him yeah (laughs) watch watch this um but in fact, the government was working on their own dealings and trying to create their own Captain America and introduce mm-hmm. John Walker, the U.S. agent, or AKA right now, as Captain America in the show. They wanted their own symbol. They wanted their own superhero back. The American government did. So they went and took it from Sam and made Captain America themselves. Such and the dude looks great... like Ernie Keebler from the Keebler Elves or freaking Popeye. I don't like <laughs> he looks the ears. So weird. Yeah, I don't like that. It's oh, the man. ears I that pop it. out. It looked like your ears, actually, Travis. It looked like your ears had... poking out of the helmet. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then he so, had that freaking, you know, Keebler elf looking uh, Popeye, as uh, as Laura said. And I was just like, yeah, no, I can definitely see that. Yeah, he definitely does eat his spinach for sure. Um, yeah, so that's the end of the episode. So it ends on a cliffhanger that um, uh, he's there being you go. passed this is what over. Happened. <laughs> Look, this is a, uh, I think this is an interesting time for a lot of these themes and story elements to be coming out and everything. It's, um, you know, we're off the heels. Uh, people who are watching this, like we're, we're days off the heels of uh, major um uh, a major shooting in Atlanta where a whole bunch of like mm. Asian women were uh, were targeted and clearly Asian people were targeted in that attack. And we start off this episode with the murder of a young Asian person uh, and dealing with the consequences of that, which I thought was very, very on the nose. Like they, the show clearly can't control what happens in the real world oh, and everything, yeah, I mean, but this just was the fact that finished this, production almost a year ago. And then you have, you know, a lot of uh, income inequality and racial inequality and a lot of discussions like, you know, like it, it's all over the place in whatever industry in the world you're talking about. And then to see like an African-American the, the Avenger white, can't even get a loan. Not just that, but like the the white Captain America bequeaths the title of Captain America to a black man. And then the country says, no, no, no we're giving it to a white person. Like it's a very interesting, it, it, these are very, very interesting themes that I think are going to make, and they need to not shy away from these themes. I think they need to kind of mirroring what's happening in reality. Yeah. It's really interesting. Um, so I, I hopefully they continue to pay off these storylines because I think these, these could be the more strongest elements of the show. This is what I want to say. Um, and I don't want this show to turn into Who's going to be the cameo? What's I don't want that to be the discussion. I, I think there's a mm-hmm. lot of human element that we can do to break down these these fantastical superhero types and actually make them real characters, make them human. Like the second you make your superhero characters humans, you've won. You've completely mm-hmm. won. This is why people don't really like very many of the DC movies. This is why Shazam is one of the better DC movies because right. they focused <laughs> on him as a human being. And it immediately makes him a likable character and it makes an enjoyable movie. Um, so we need to have more of that. And I hope they can stick with these elements. The more I talk about it, the more I can say that I didn't, my enjoyment level has, has risen. So if you ask me again, spoiler free, my answer should be, I really enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed okay, this good. episode Thanks. and the themes that are there. But I, I wasn't disliking it whatsoever. Like I wasn't. Yeah, I know you didn't. You just said it didn't wow you. Right. Like I said, when when you I heard that, because ex- like, I felt like this had layers. This yeah. had layers. Of I, things. It, I had. It wasn't no a, a kick ass special effects, you right, know, yeah. like extravaganza. But it had the right amount of action. Had the right amount of special effects. Had the right amount of that human, you know, like those. Just like I said, that, that human nature, that characteristics of you know your home life, people that you know, the struggles of everything. Things we're dealing and with, like with these characters. They like the did second, a great job. With the second the first he, episode. This is just the first episode. Yeah, it's so, good. so much more to to to, so to unravel over the next five. And uh, so, so hopefully much, to keep the same length, forty nine minutes to like yeah. hopefully an hour or so, uh, kind of really give us you know good content. And this can be like a nice little four and a half five hour movie, pretty much that we're gonna pretty watch. Much. And it's gonna be in that. Uh, I, I can't wait to see the see episode two and uh, I'd like to know what you know everybody else thinks about this as well Ooh. because this was a really great episode and don't let any of this fool you we're going to get you know some nice little you know creepy things mm-hmm. and you know backdoor stuff that you didn't expect so this is going to be a great uh, falling out which is going to lead right into Loki and then it's going to go Ooh, June know, 11th out from just there, got a so. date Oh man, this, ah, dude, this is going to be so awesome. It's going to be so wait. good. So uh, yeah, let us know what you thought about this episode. Um, and uh, Travis, tell the people what to do. I need you guys. I need you guys. Need. Not want. or well, we do want, but need. To when you're done watching this episode, hit that subscribe button. So and we like can it. deliver the content right to your face. Like right to your grizzle. Right there. To you. From us. With a bow on it. <laughs> And you can ring that bell. You can hit that thumb. All that stuff does good stuff for the show and allows us, it keeps us going. It keeps us pumping up more content and trying to build this to whatever we want to build it to. But things are going well. Things are going swimmingly. I'm happy. So do those things for us and Peel, take us home, man. I am ready. All right, my friends. Uh, Yeah. Until next week, rock out what you got out. Bye bye. <laughs>